Hello guys, Ingemar here. Uh, welcome to my 10,000 kilometer review of Loki. And we're going to talk about the quality of the car, the fuel consumption, of course, I know you're very interested in that, uh, the turning radius, the issues I had, I experienced during my first 10,000 kilometers with Loki, and the things I would change, plus a little summary at the end. Good, so let's jump in. Uh, let's talk about the quality. Overall, this car is very strong, very sturdy. You have a very, very good feeling when you uh, touch anything, when you when you drive it, when you get in, get out. I mean, just listen to the sound of closing the door. Uh, you open, you close the door, you, it's heavy. You can feel that it's really, really well built. Also, the quality of the interior, the stitching, uh, Everything is nice, the seats are nice. Uh, I don't have any rattling noises. I'm talking about the noise, the noise level of the car is very, very surprising. I talked about that already. Uh, that's one of the very, very big plus uh, I identified um, in the Grenadier. So the noise level driving faster is really, really good. And I think that's all part of the way it's built, of the quality, right? Uh, I identified though two issues, um, they are handles mainly so here in the front uh, the handle for the hood um, it doesn't suit the rest of the impression of the car if you open the hood you have the feeling you have to be careful not to tear off the handle so it's a little bit uh, loose kind of it's a plastic handle and the same is for the handle for the cargo door uh, same issue there in the back of the big door um, same impression, uh, either Ineos is going to fix that on the next update or the aftermarket will find a solution. But those, those are really the only two things I found out about um, the quality that I didn't like. Um, jumping to the next topic, the fuel consumption. So overall, I run the Grenadier with 12 liters on 100 kilometers. That's uh, 20 miles per gallon. Um, as I mentioned before in a previous video, I'm, I'm not holding back or in the comment section, actually, that's why I pointed that out. I'm not a fuel saving guy. So 12 liters overall, I have a good mixture of uh, motorway. I think a little bit more motorway right now because I'm driving quite often long distances currently. Um, if I go solely on the motorway, I had 13.3 liters per 100 kilometers or 17.7 uh, miles per gallon. Um, that was a long trip, more than 300 kilometers. And I went up to 130 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 80 miles per hour. Um, so yeah, and then I took another measurement where I just drove around here in the area, overland, villages and so on. And it ended up at 10.7 kilometers sorry, 10.7 liters per 100 kilometers or 22 miles per gallon. So those are my real life data. This is my real life data. Um, yeah, for me, that's okay. That's uh, what I expected of the car. I, or I colored it even with a higher fuel consumption, but that, that's fine. And as I mentioned before, Loki is the diesel version, of course. So that all is for the diesel. Um, I took also a measurement of the turning radius because I saw that a lot of people out there are interested in that as well um, we I did the first measurement in high range and uh, took it around it was 12.9 meters and the second measurement was taken in low range with the center diff lock engaged and it ended up at 14 meters of turning radius so the next are the issues I experienced over the last 10,000 kilometers. They were mainly, they were solely soft ratios. Uh, nothing did break. Uh, everything regarding the hardware is working. Everything is fine. Uh, the only thing you have is some nuisance warnings because they are not persistent. They go away again. They include the telltale speaker, uh, an e-call error. Sometimes when you start up, the transmission error comes up for a split second. The moment you start going, it's gone. And uh, I had the f a failure of one PDC sensor 
but only intermittently as well, so that didn't last. Um, what I found out is it's very, very helpful if you give the car some time when you turn on the ignition, leave it there for two or three seconds, then start the engine and 90% of those issues are already solved with that. Uh, obviously it needs some self-test to complete and then everything is gone. Um, the only thing that came up every now and then, I would say in one out of 10 uh, drives, is the telltale speaker malfunction. That means you don't have the PDC beeping and uh, no uh, sound for if you, if you engage the, the indicator. Um, that's gone with the next engine start. So it's mainly software issues and I'm quite confident the first or second software update will get rid of all those issues. Uh, the reassuring thing is there's nothing wrong with anything else. Everything else mechanically works uh, and those are the only things that I experienced. And as I said, easy fix. Give the car some time to complete the tests and it's gone. Nothing is persistent. So um, I'm quite happy with that. That's something I expected with a brand new car. And I'm really, really confident those issues will be fixed over the next few months. So that's uh, it. That's really it. That's the only thing I had with Loki. Um, yeah. Well, next thing. What would I change uh, with the car? I have three points, basically, uh, that I would definitely you know, update, fine-tune, let's put it that way. First is the brightness control of the display, the automatic brightness control, plus there must be some quick access to change the brightness uh, in a faster way. It's connected to the headlights as well. When they turn on, the, the, the display brightness is dimmed. Um, of course, that's sometimes a bit annoying because you it, it, it's hard to see the display if those lights come on um, if it's still bright if it's just on the edge with uh, uh, brightness outside with the daylight so then it this this definitely needs some fine tuning uh, or as i said a quick access function i don't want to go into three sub menus to change the, uh, the, the brightness of the display in a quick way um, you can see also in this little spot here uh, that when you enter a tunnel, for example, it takes quite some time until the headlights come on. So that is a point which uh, can be improved, definitely. And well, when you go outside, or when you get out of the tunnel and go back into the, uh, bright daylight, um, then of course it takes some time until the headlights come off as well. A again, um, that's basically, that's not an issue, but it's the same system. So fine tuning of that probably is a good idea. Uh, the next thing I have is of course the protection of the entry here of the entry area. This protection plate, the plastic protection plate, we talked about that already in a previous video. Uh, it's not big enough and you, well you cause some scratches on the paint there. Um, would be nice if there would be a solution already provided by Neo so you don't have to put a film on there or anything uh, similar. Uh, same of course is here in the back uh, at the passenger door scratches here if they don't fix it or if you don't put a clear film on that one. And well the third thing I would change is probably the size of the screen for the rear view camera. So if that pops up it's on the small side as you can see, it's nice that you can identify the tow hook. Um, it's really, really handy if you back up towards the trailer, um, but it could be bigger. It could be bigger. I think that's a software issue as well. You can reprogram that and just fill the whole screen with uh, the rear camera. Yeah, but that's really the only three things I identified that bother me. I'm happy with the rest so far. Let's see if it's still the same after 20,000 kilometers. <laughs> So as a summary, pros and cons of the car. On the pro side, definitely uh, the comfort, the noise level when you go faster. It is definitely an everyday car for me. I tried it now over the last 10,000 kilometers and I was a bit worried if it would be as good as my previous car on the motorway. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but it's 
absolutely fine. It's way better than I expected. So that's definitely on the Pro. Also the way uh, Ineos was able to combine this design, the quality, the, 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 the sturdiness, this strong build with something modern inside, comfortable inside. I, I really, really like that. So that's, that's definitely a Pro for me. On the negative side, that is, uh, are the, the software issues, but I'm confident that those will be fixed as long as all the rest works. I'm happy with that. That was something I expected uh, with a brand new car as well. So that's always uh, in the beginning and uh, one or two software updates later, everything is solved. So I'm confident with that. I would still put that on the negative side, of course. Uh, another thing, there's a discussion ongoing as well in, in the web. Uh, is about the vibrations uh, between 1800 and 2000 RPM. Um, I can only talk about the diesel engine, the diesel version. There is some vibration uh, mainly in the higher gears. So gear number seven and eight, between 80 kilometers per hour and 108 or 110 kilometers per hour, you have some vibration going through the car. Uh, I'm not an expert, so I have not exactly identified the cause for it but it feels to me like the vibration from the engine or the drive shaft. I, 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 I suspect the engine, honestly. The engine is just transmitted onto the frame and it just matches the frequency during those conditions and it goes through the whole car. Uh, I tried to capture it on the camera, it didn't really work. It's not extreme or anything. It, it's, it's not annoying to me, but, it, but it's there. It's there. Um, well, we all know vibrations might cause issues in the future. So it's definitely worth to keep an eye on that. So my summary, after those 10,000 kilometers, I still love Loki. I'm really, really happy with it. And I hope that goes on like the first 10,000 kilometers. So the next 100,000 and 1 million will be the same. <laughs> Again, if you have questions, doesn't matter which one, leave it in the comment section. I will try to answer them and I will try to answer them in the next videos as well. And if you like the channel, subscribe and see you in the next time. Thank you.